Baker 9 weather with Chief Meteorologist Alden LaCroix. Well, we were anticipating it last week, a very busy week ahead, so let's get into those details. Right now, all eyes are on about 12 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. That's when we're expecting uh, this area of low pressure that you can see up towards Alaska to start uh, tracking a little bit further south. And as it does so, it's going to undergo this process called rapid intensification, and it's uh, going to meet the criteria of a bomb cyclone. And all that means is it's going to drop more than 24 millibars within a 24 hour period. That is some rapid intensif intensification. And we're expecting wind gusts potential of up to 80 miles per hour down towards Port Orford. And that is right on the coastline as well. So here's the area of low pressure up towards Alaska. We have the moisture that's going to arrive first. So showers will start to move in around lunchtime tomorrow. And then the wind is going to kick up for everyone about seven o'clock tomorrow night. Now the strongest winds are going to be from Port Orford all the way down to Crescent City, but we still are going to see some pretty gusty winds even up towards Coos Bay where there's the potential of up to 60 mile per hour wind gusts. That's mainly if you're uh, toward the west of Highway 101. Once you cross Highway 101, the winds are going to be a lot lighter. We still could be getting occasional wind gusts upwards of 40 miles per hour even inland. So just something to keep mindful of uh, tomorrow night and into Wednesday morning. So here's the uh, process right here. You can see the area flow pressure kind of bottoming out offshore. Now the biggest concern is going to be toward the southern Oregon coast because notice the orientation of these winds slamming anywhere from Cape Blanco all the way down to Crescent City and even parts of Eureka and California. So this is the danger zone right here. We're expecting potential wind gusts on the coast up to 80 miles per hour. Port Orford is going to see the bulk of the storm and that's going to occur about seven o'clock tomorrow night. But even if you're north of this line, the Oregon coast is going to have the potential of wind gusts to 60 miles per hour. And again, that's any time after about three o'clock tomorrow and seven o'clock is really the prime time that we're expecting the worst conditions. Once we head toward Thursday morning and realistically even Wednesday morning, we're going to start to see conditions calm down. The rain will eventually move back in though, and that's going to be another story into Thursday and Friday. All right, here is potential wind gusts. This is not sustained winds. This means at times we could have a sudden gust up to these speeds and you can see 40 mile per hour wind gust, a possibility even here across Eugene. So the Willamette Valley is going to be windy tomorrow, especially about seven, eight o'clock tomorrow night. Here's the northern Oregon coast uh, anywhere from, say, Coos Bay North. There's the potential of wind gust up to 60 miles per hour. But notice the difference once you head south. Gold Beach, Port Orford, up to 70 mile per hour wind gusts, and there's a potential of up to 80. So the biggest concern is going to be from Cape Blanco south. If you're north of that, it's still going to be windy, just not the damaging wind threat. Here's the storm coming in. You can see the heavier rainfall starting to shape up off the Oregon coast. We're not going to see a whole heck of a lot of rainfall from this particular event. It's mainly going to be Thursday and into Friday, but watch as it moves inland. A lot of the activity is going to be to the south, but you can see shower activity expected uh, from the coast to the Cascade. So rainfall amounts, uh, it's going to add up, possibly up to an inch, but the heaviest, you can see those shades of red aim down towards southern Oregon, and that's where we are going to be concerned for both heavy rain and those gusty winds. There's also a cold side to this storm as well, and we are going to see snow above 4,000 feet and eventually it's going to rise to 5,000 feet. So realistically, the only concern for snow is going to be for those passes. And here is that busy week ahead. Again, 60 mile per hour wind gust, a possibility toward the Oregon coast anytime after about 12 o'clock tomorrow for the Roseburg area. Uh, rain and wind arriving by around uh, 12 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Wind gust potential of up to 50 miles per hour down across the uh, Douglas County coast. Now across the Cascades, we're still going to be windy up there. About 50 mile per hour wind gusts expected tomorrow with the heavy snow. About 15 inches of new snow is expected at pass level for Eugene and Corvallis. About 50 degrees tomorrow, but the big story, Matt, is going to be the rain and the wind. Not a big wind concern, especially for us or our coast. It's going to be a windy day by all means, but uh, Port Orford yeah. South, it's going to be a 